So how do you supercharge a Tesla? Well, go over to the charging supercharger, pull it out. Uh-oh, the cable isn't long enough. That's a bit annoying. Welcome to Tech in a Car. I'm Oliver. This is the Tesla Model 3. This car is iconic. Everywhere you look now, there is a Model 3. Tesla were the originators of the mass market EV. The Model S was by no means a low cost car when it came out, but over time, Tesla's created more cars. They brought down the costs, and now the Model 3 starts at around 40,000. Pounds. This car is £41,000. This is the standard range model, rear wheel drive with 305 miles of WLTP range. This is actually a standard range plus, so this has got slightly more range. There's also two all wheel drive versions, the long range, which has 374 miles of range, and the performance version, which has 340 miles of range, can also do 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds and is very, 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 very fast. Not that this is slow, this can still do 0 to 60 faster than pretty much all other cars, and because it is an electric, it has instant torque. This car it also has the aero wheels, which are 18 inches, but there's other versions of the design for the wheels available. And this car has the enhanced autopilot, which is about 3,400 pounds. There's also the full self-driving beta, which is around 6,000 pounds. These prices do change a bit, so do check them out, but that's a rough idea of the pricing. So this car, as expected, is about 47,900 pounds with the enhanced autopilot. Let's have a look now at the inside because there are some changes between this generation, this latest version of the Model 3 and the previous. So the next question is how much spaces are in the back of the Tesla Model 3? Well, I mean, I think you can see I've got a lot of space back here. This beautiful panoramic glass sunroof, which only has a break here in the middle and obviously where the front of the driver is, is really, really nice. It adds the airiness of the inside and I love how EVs mostly have cool panoramic glass roofs like this. Like I said, tons of space for my legs. The only thing is, it'd be nice if this was a bit more support for my thighs, but very comfortable. These seats in the back are just as comfortable as in the front. What about boot space? Well, there's another change back here, which we can look at as well. What about rear storage space at the back of the Tesla Model 3? Well, now we've got a power tailgate, which I love a power tailgate. Who doesn't love a power tailgate? There's tons of space back here, 425 liters, you fit your suitcase. You've even got a space underneath here where all your cables are, your charging cables. So you've got space there as well. That's quite spacious. Another thing, we do have a front as well. So there's space under the bonnet too. And then we can close it like that. The other thing you might notice when you're sitting in the driver's seat and you look through your rear mirrors and for your side mirrors, you might see the bulging arches of the rear wheels. It looks like a supercar when you're looking through your wing mirrors. It looks very, very sporty and it's a nice design touch which maybe you don't notice unless you're driving the car. What about front space in the Model 3? Let's check that out. Or you can of course use the app to do that. And this is our front space and we've got quite a bit of space here. We've got our towing hook in here as well if you want to tow your car which is great to see. And this has got a nice plastic cover here. So there's quite a bit of space here. Very easy to close as well. Done. So how do you supercharge a Tesla? Well, go over to the charging supercharger, pull it out. Uh-oh, the cable isn't long enough. That's a bit annoying. What am I gonna do about that? What a great opportunity to show you the summon feature in the Tesla app. So I just want to move the car backwards a bit. So let's see if we can do that. And we're going back, going back. And now, is in the app to move it back and forwards and summon it. I can do the supercharging. Put that away. Pull it off here. Press a button, it will open up like this. So in Europe, these have a different charging connection to the US, for example. In the US, Tesla has a custom port. In Europe, they use the same standard charging connection as everyone else does. And now, this is supercharging. That simple to supercharge it, and what a great opportunity to use a summon feature as well. And this is turning on. Let's have a look inside the car now. Now in this version of the Model 3, there are some differences. Namely, for example, here in the middle, there is now a little sliding tray here, which has got a lot of space you can put stuff in down here. And then there's two USBs on the inside here, which weren't in this position on the previous models before this area here was basically removable. Now there's two wireless charging 
areas here so you can put your phone on there and it will wirelessly charge and then you've got your space in the middle here for other stuff we've got two cup holders and we've got a nice big area here for further storage as well inside here is very minimalistic some people love it some people don't love it this screen is fantastic tesla has updated the infotainment system on this car with the latest version so it's got some new colorful graphics on here which i like the look of I love the ability that you can activate the dash cam and see what's going on from your phone remotely. That's fantastic. I love the fact that Tesla keep offering these updates, which add new features. Now, I'm going to just talk about the driving for a second on here. This car has by far and away the most advanced driver assistance system that you can get. Now, there are things I really love about it and there are things I don't love about it, but is very 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 clever me personally i would opt for the full self-driving now i know that's going to get some people going oh no no that's not a good idea because i know that you can't use a full self-driving in the uk but for me personally such a big investment as six and a half thousand pounds or six thousand eight hundred pounds or you know it probably will go up as elon keeps putting the prices up every now and again this price this value proposition, I think, is there to have this technology built in so you can have the most advanced driving assistance, automatic driving level two automation. By the way, check out my ebook on car technology where I explain the different versions of car automation. And I think that paying £6,000 or £8,000 or whatever it is, even if it comes down, is more than most people can stomach the cost of. Whereas when you buy a car, you incorporate the cost into the payments. So I would buy it upfront personally myself. And this channel is taking the car as well, but you know, that's what I would do. Let's go for a drive now. So I'm on my way to a supercharger and I'm gonna test out the supercharger, but I wanna talk about the driving first. So I've had the pleasure of driving a lot of electric cars recently. I've driven the Kia EV6, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, at the very, very top end of the latest electric cars. Going back a bit, I've driven the Honda E, I've driven the e Citroen EC4, I've driven a lot of cars. In fact, I can't even remember all of the electric cars that I've driven. Of course, I've been in the Rivian. So I've got lots to compare this car to. The Model 3 is Tesla's big push to get Tesla to the mass market, and it's worked. There are Model 3s everywhere. You just have to walk around, drive around, you will see a Model 3 somewhere. Tesla have really captured the public imagination with this car. And then they've got the performance models, which are really fast. And then if you're in the US or some people in the UK, you might be able to get a plant, which is really, really fast. And of course, Tesla reports to the UK the Model Y. So that's out here now as well. It's been out in the US for a while. So what do I think of this? How does it compare? So let's start with the autopilot. So this car has the enhanced autopilot. It's got all the functionality you can get. It does not have the full self-driving because full self-driving is not available in the EU or the UK. Now what's really cool about this is, as I'm doing now, it does automatic lane changes. You can see here, I just tap the indicator and it changed lane. I'll demonstrate it again. Now, this isn't new. Tesla has had this for ages, but it's fun to try out and experience. And it's telling me to change back because I'm gonna to go to the supercharger in a second with we'll turn off here at Gatwick Airport. Now, I love this automatic lane change. I think the Tesla autopilot is very, very, very good. It does have its weaknesses though. And I'm in two minds about whether the implementation of it is better on here or on other non-Tesla cars. So what I'm talking about is, and this is very, very common in the UK and very common in lots of places as well. You get to a turning off on the motorway, which is what we're on. Now, on the motorway, this is perfect. It stays in its lane, goes around the corners. Better, by the way, than any other EV I've driven. It goes around the corners, just like they're not there. It's fantastic. Here we go, another lane change. As long as I keep my hand on the steering wheel, it will change for me. Very, very simply, you can see here. Now, if we come to a junction or a turning like we have in front of us here, where there's lines dividing the road up, the autopilot gets confused. It doesn't know which way to go or which way to turn. And this is, I can't decide whether this is good or bad because on other cars, the adaptive cruise control, the driver assist features will just turn off. When it gets near to a junction, it will just turn off and it will say, no, thank you. And it'll make you do everything yourself. 
which means that you're not a bit confused when you get to those turning offs. I think in this car, in the Tesla with the autopilot, it can be a bit disorientating. Now, you'll get used to it, but as somebody that gets into the car and it's new and you're getting in it and you're trying to figure out where the lines are between where the autopilot can drive and where it can't drive, I think it can be a bit confusing. It can be a bit unnatural and I can't decide what I think about it. Now, of course, you'll get used to it with any car. Don't get me wrong. You all know that the car is going to have trouble when it comes to certain turning off sections and you'll automatically just do it instead or turn the autopilot off. So like any car, it's down to experience and driving the car. So I don't want anyone to say that this is a negative because I, it's not a negative. This car's got the best driver assistance features of any car. And you can and you can see that just by just by using it. There we go, autopilot's on. I can use the little wheel on the right to increase the maximum speed because it's 70. There we go, we we'll go back to 70. And now I've got the autopilot on and you can see the blue lines mean the car can see the road. The autopilot works really well on the motorway is the lane changing, automatic lane changing is great. I love the fact that you now get like on the Kia EV6, like on the Hyundai Ioniq 5, like on the Hyundai Tucson that I was driving, you get the little camera view now in the blind spot when you're indicating. I think that's very, very clever. And that is a good thing and it makes it better and easier and safer to drive. And this car is, is just very, very safe. There's, I don't think there's any questions about its ability to keep you safe. Frustrations I have, I wish there was Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, I'm not gonna lie. As nice as this is, I miss Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Having said that, my car is connected to the phone by Bluetooth all the way around. The phone is connected to the car by Bluetooth and it's working and, and it's great. I've got two wireless chargers here, which I can't get on the new Audis because I've stopped making them. The wireless chargers, not the Audis. Although, <laughs> although they might as well have stopped making them at the speed they're making them. So I like that as well. I love the fact it shows you traffic lights when you're driving in town. I love that you can see what's at the side of the road. You can see how close you are to the curb. I think all of these things are really, really, really fantastic and great features of the Model 3 and of course of all Teslas. This car is actually a standard range plus and it's got a range of 261 miles or a charge limit of 261 miles, which hopefully you can see here on the app. As you can see, it's telling me there's five minutes remaining and it's showing me the status. So this is really handy. It shows you this information in the app, of course, Again, this is not the first EV to have it, but this Tesla app has got tons of functionality. I can turn the music up and down. I can turn the summon on and off. You saw earlier, I tried that to demonstrate how I move the car forwards and backwards. So it's all built into this car and it's very, very intuitive and easy to use. And it's something which makes Tesla a very, very enticing experience. There's a, I think a comparison between Tesla and Apple saying that actually in terms of simplicity, that these cars are very, very simple as far as Apple are also very, very simple. I think that's a slight misinterpretation because the iPhone and the iPad and iOS is incredibly complicated. I just think with time, people have got used to how Apple works. And so as Apple have added more and more features and more and more functionality, people haven't realized how advanced and how much these phones can do. Tesla are a bit like that. They're adding features all the time to the Model 3, to the Model S, to the Y, to the Model X. They're doing it all and they're adding the features and it's getting better and better and better incrementally. And that's a very, very clever way of doing things. And it's something which all car manufacturers are starting to do, but Tesla were first. And I give credit where it's due for that. Hope you enjoyed this video on the Tesla Model 3. Big thank you to Tesla for this. And give me a like and subscribe for more on the channel. I've got a ton of other videos on EVs. Thank you.